you are. You know how I've been brainstorming ways to cheer up Simon in the hopes that he'll open up to me? Am I missing something? Or is this just an empty wall? The wall's empty now, but it used to be where Simon hung up his favorite and most prized paintings. I'm not sure what happened to all of them, but some have got to still be here at Hogwarts. If I track those down and hang them back up, I'm sure it'd mean a lot to him. Do you think you two could help me find Simon's missing paintings and bring them back here? I do it myself, but being a portrait makes that... challenging, to say the least. Of course, Gossamer. That's what friends are for. Besides, I've admittedly gotten rather invested in Simon's story. So, where should we start? Simon had a lot of favorite favorites. A portrait of former Minister of Magic Josephina Flint standing on her head. A painting of a unicorn grazing in the forest. A tapestry of a noble dragon slaying a corrupt knight. But I think we should start with the inflated girl portrait he painted in his third year. He always seemed particularly fond of it. To tell you the truth, I found it a bit odd and couldn't understand why Simon favored it when he painted much more beautiful portraits. But if any of his paintings are going to knock him out of his funk, it's that one. Hmm, I know I've seen it around the castle somewhere recently. I just can't remember where exactly. Why don't we ask some of the other portraits? They were a big help to us before, and a peculiar portrait like that one is bound to be memorable. one of these portraits to know something about the inflated girl painting. Let's ask around. Hmm. A portrait of an inflated girl. Yes, I do recall such a painting. And the young girl who inspired it. If my memory serves, she was a Gryffindor with a particularly sharp tongue. A weapon she frequently used against poor Simon. Normally, he just grinned and bore the bullying, but on that day, a boy stepped in and gave her a taste of her own potion. Simon stopped coming around as often after that day. I dare say he seemed quite taken with that other boy. Yes, I know the portrait you're talking about. A disturbing product of a disturbed mind. You take that back! Simon's not disturbed! He's the nicest boy I've ever met! You're in denial. To those of us with unclouded eyes, it came as no surprise that he turned out to be a bad egg. An inflated girl? Are you talking about that unnerving portrait in the entrance hall? From what I hear, she's been making the other portraits quite uncomfortable. You'd be doing everyone a favor by moving her to a more suitable location. I do believe I saw the caretaker transporting a portrait matching that description not too long ago. I couldn't tell you where he was taking it, but he seemed oddly smitten with it. He kept talking about moving it to a place where it would get the attention and appreciation it deserved. That man really ought to get out more. If that gossipy portrait's information is correct, the portrait of an inflated girl should be on display in the entrance hall. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go! 
inflated bell portrait has to be here somewhere. Let's look around the room and see if we can find it. Cosima, is that the inflated bell portrait? You found her! Simon is going to be so happy to have her back! It's such an uncomfortable image. No wonder it's so polarizing. Hmm. Do you think Simon painted this portrait to celebrate the time his mummy finally got what she deserved? No way! Simon didn't like bullies, but he wasn't mean-spirited. More than anything, he just wanted to be left alone. I agree. I get the feeling that his motivations weren't so petty. There's no rage or malice behind the brushstrokes. Now come on, let's get the inflated girl off that wall and back where she belongs. I can't wait to see the look on Simon's face when he sees our surprise! Got it? Just a little to the left? Uh, there! That's perfect! Where did you find that? The entrance hall! This wall was looking a little bare, and I know how much this portrait means to you. So we thought we'd surprise you with it. What do you think? I think... I think I told you to leave me alone. you go, I just want you to know that I think your portrait is beautiful. You do? Most people find it disturbing or unnerving. Only one other person has ever called it beautiful. I really do. It's harrowing, yet deeply personal and sentimental. I'd love to hear the full story behind it. Since you insist, I can't remember what I did to incur Mabel's wrath that day, but she had it out for me. She was just about to cast the pimple jinx on me when Gwydion, a boy in the year above me, who had witnessed everything, cut her off with the inflating charm. I'll never forget what Gwydion said afterward. There. Now your appearance matches your ego. I was speechless. No one had stood up for me like that before. Gwydion got detention, and I got a best friend. No, more than a best friend. A knight in not-so-shining armor. I painted this portrait that same day so I'd never forget his gesture. I remember you telling me the story of how you and Gwydion met, but I had no idea that's where the idea for the portrait came from. You and Gwydion became inseparable after that. What happened to him? Did you ever confess? Was he there when you... passed? Has he... has he passed too? I feel like I've missed so much. Gwydion. Gwydion's moved on. I still suggest you do the same. I don't understand. Simon used to tell me everything. I know it must be frustrating and painful, but look on the bright side, Gossima. Your plan worked. That's right. The inflated girl portrait did seem to lift Simon's spirits and get him to open up, if only a little bit. You know what? You're absolutely right. I shouldn't see this as a loss. I should see this as proof we're on the right track. Then why not make finding furniture our next step in restoring this place to its former glory? It'll certainly make the place feel less empty. Good idea. I'm not sure where all the old stuff ended up, but an old friend of mine might. You 
give me some time to find her. If she's still at Hogwarts, I'll let you two know straight away. Good news! Remember the old friend I mentioned earlier? The one who knows where the old furniture might be? Well, I've found her! She's still working in the kitchens and thinks she might be able to help us. The kitchens? Is your friend a house elf? That's right! Probably one of the best you'll ever meet, too. She's expecting us in the kitchens. I've already told Lottie to meet us there. Now, come on, let's go! Secret Clubhouse Tidy, and even help Simon and Gwydion furnish it. Nice to meet you, Casa. How did you come to know Simon and his friends? <laughs> when Casa overheard Simon and Gwydion's plans to fix it up, Casa offered to help. Simon and Gwydion treated Casa well with friends rather than housekeeper. Casa has never forgotten their kindness. It's being stored in the Room of Requirement. We just need to find it. Cossa would fetch it herself, but Cossa is needed in kitchens. Don't worry, Cossa. Just tell us what to look for, and we'll do the rest. Remember spotting a clubhouse's multi-purpose table, a matching wooden bench, a floor lamp with a shade, and a stack of old books in that room. Hmm, sounds simple enough. Let's head to the room of requirement and get started. Table might not look like him. Simon did some of his best sketching here. Jessamine often sewed on it, and Gwydion even transfigured it into a horse. It sounds like it holds a lot of memories. I'm glad we can bring it back where it belongs. This was Gwydion's favorite seat for revising, though I never understood why. It doesn't look very comfortable. It doesn't, does it? Perhaps he enchanted it with some sort of spell that makes you more intelligent if you sit on it. <laughs> then again, perhaps Gwydion just prefers a firm seat. belonged to Gwydion. He loved studying old tomes. The dustier the better. What's your favorite genre of book, Gossamer? That's easy! <laughs> the kind with pictures! this lamp gives off. It reminds me of all the late nights I spent chatting with Simon. That sounds lovely. Indeed it was. Sadly, I'm not so sure Simon still feels the same. Uh -oh. Looks like all that moving furniture around has stirred up some trouble. Vent 
Atlantis. Welcome back. Did they manage to find all four pieces of furniture? Yes, though it does make me wonder how the furniture ended up there in the first place. After Simon's tragic accident, Ed Master and all furniture moved there to discourage. Accident? What accident? Cosima didn't know. Simon blew shrinking solution, but something went wrong. Instead of shrinking the size of mouse, unfortunately, shrunken Simon caught attention of escaped pet toad. Toad mistook Simon for fly and ate him. Oh, what a way to go. When you said it was a tragic accident, you weren't joking. But, but potions were Simon's best subject. He'd never make a mistake like that. Cos had a hard time believing too, but Simon said so himself. I just can't believe it. And why did he need a shrinking solution in the first place? That's it. I have to talk to him. Hold on, Gossamer. I don't think it's a good idea to ambush him. His death is clearly a sore subject for him. That's right. You're liable to turn him away even more if you bombard him with questions about it. For now, why don't we focus on getting this furniture back to the clubhouse and figure out where to go from there. Is it just like you remembered? No, but I actually like that about it. A little bit of old, a little bit of new. I think it's what the gang would want. From now on, feel free to decorate the space however you'd like. Charms is a very practical subject, which you are required to take until your fifth year. I will teach everyone the proper pronunciation and wrist movement for charms. Charms is a very practical subject, which you are required to take until your fifth year. Once upon a time, a student named Ron Weasley, as you may have heard, beat an adult troll in his first year. And he did it with none other than this charm, protecting his friends Harry Potter and Hermione Granger in the process. Fantastic fun! 
Cornish pixie. <laughs> now you win. Fantastic bomb. Total Charms is a very practical subject, which you are required to take until your fifth year. I will teach everyone the proper pronunciation and wrist movement for charms. Charms is a very practical subject, which you are required to take until your fifth year. Once upon a time, a student named Ron Wee... I can't find. My favorite pair, silver and embroidered and... <sighs> oh, forget it. I have plenty of gloves. What's one less pair? I already told you, no. What's lost is lost. It's not worth the trouble. You, however, you could do with a makeover. Perhaps an entirely new wardrobe. Me? 
I think I'm dressed rather smart today. No, no. This simply won't do. You should wear something that expresses a unique personal style. Personal style? Like what? How do I know? It's your style. Think, how do you want the world to see you? Hopefully not like this. You could do much better. Hmm, fine. I'll help you. It's not that I want to, it's just that I'd rather not have to look at this ridiculous outfit of yours any longer. Um, okay. your look want to use my magic wardrobe again allow me I'll make you even more beguiling <laughs> go ahead please take your time ah finally fashion let's see if we can improve your look want to use my magic wardrobe again Allow me, I'll make you even more beguiling. <laughs> Go ahead, please take your time. Ah, finally, fashion. Let's see if we can improve your look. Want to use my magic wardrobe again? Allow me. I'll make you even more beguiling. You look lovely, dear. So, what do you think of my new look mirror? Certainly took your time. Let me see. A gift for you, dear. Your friend picked them out personally as a thank you gift. Our new mythic lavender gloves. On you, they'll no doubt look divine. wanted to say thanks, Cassandra. They may not be as nice as the pair you lost, but I hope you like them. I take back what I said earlier. Apparently, you do have a sense of style. Which still should be checked by professionals, like myself. Well, thanks in advance, Cassandra. I'll be sure to get your approval the next time I go shopping. What do you think? Shall I wrap these up for you? Here is everything on your list. 
Let me wrap these for you. Ready for dueling practice? Aren't you excited, Kev? Not particularly. You know I'm no good under pressure. And that means I'm no good at dueling. It's terrifying. But practicing is the only way to get better. Think of it like homework, only more fun. Oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure I have a master duelist in me. You don't have to be the best. You just need to know how to defend yourself when something dangerous happens. When something dangerous happens, I plan to stay as far away from danger as possible. Thank you very much. Scaredy cat, scaredy cat. Whatever, Robin. But if you get hurt, don't say I didn't warn you. What did I say? I was just kidding around. Kevin is sensitive about the things he's not good at. Flying, socializing, dueling. You should know that. I do. I just wish he wouldn't worry so much. Kev is the smartest guy I know. With a little practice, he'd be a great duelist. Hmm, what if he only had to be really good at one spell? What are you talking about? I have an idea that just might work. I'm going to find Kevin. I thought I'd find you here. You all right? It's embarrassing how bad I am at dueling. And every once in a while, Robin really gets under my skin. She's just trying to help in her own special Robin way. I know. I just wish I was a better duelist. I get so flustered. About that, I have an idea. What if, instead of trying to master every spell Professor Flitwick has assigned us, you just master one, Protego Tatalum, isn't that a protection charm? Oh, if I could create a shield, I could protect my friends and be useful in a duel. For a change. That would be less overwhelming for sure. Exactly. I mean, you couldn't hide behind this one spell forever. But once you get the feel of dueling, you'll be more comfortable and the rest will come naturally. What do you say? I think that's brilliant! Will you help me practice? <laughs> I'd be happy to. What if I mess up? Can we practice before class begins? I think I know the trick to the spell, just like the book says. Let me give it a go. I think I did it. The air around me seems to be... You've got to try it too. Ah! 
Protego to Talon. Well, well, what do we have here? Dueling practice for nerds? A lot of good it'll do you, Kevin. I wouldn't be so sure, Kobe. Kevin's mastered a new spell. You need more than one good spell to win a duel. Would you like to test that theory? Protego to Talon. Nifla. What do you need? Now you're in trouble. Incendio. Hornet Pixies. I'll get you for this. Fantastic bow. Monster bow. Gotta hand it to you, Kevin. Didn't think you had that kind of fight in you. Was that... A, a compliment? From a fray? Calm down. We'll let you off easy. Yeah, next time you won't be so lucky. I hardly did anything. It was just a protection spell. What are you talking about? Without your shield, we would have been done for. You saved us. Yeah, I saw the whole thing. They would have been toast if it weren't for you. And Kev, I'm sorry I called you a scaredy cat. I was just kidding around, but it was still kind of mean. That's all right. I know you were trying to help in your weird way. And thank you. I couldn't have learnt that spell without you. It was all you, Kevin. You're a natural defenseman. We should totally team up, Kev. You keep me safe, and I'll knock our opponents out cold. We'll win every duel. <laughs> Excellent idea. You two would make a cute couple. I mean, a great team. anything about your family yet? No, nothing yet. Cassandra was probably lying. If she knew anything, she'd have told the whole school by now. Maybe. But she seemed to know something. Hey, did you see that? This book just moved. No, don't open that. We need to catch them all before the Librarian catches us, or it'll be a week of detention. At least! Incendio! Monster Blast! Oh, what do you? Now you're in trouble. Nifla! Fantastic 
Very suspicious. It's almost as if someone put a curse on it and left it for us to find. Who would do such a thing? Cassandra. I knew it was you. Relax, Daniel. I'm not here for a fight. Just a little fun. Plus, I thought you might want to read this. What is it? What you're looking for, obviously. The Quibbler? That's just a load of old rubbish. I agree. It's a silly old rag full of ridiculous lies that only a fool would take seriously. Which is why I'm sure you won't believe a word of what it says about Ivy. Ivy? What? Did you think this was about you? Sorry, Daniel Page, but you're not that interesting. Goodbye. I'm sure it's nothing. Wait, stop! There! Can that be true? I... I don't believe it. I think we should show this article to the others. We can do it after dinner, once everyone else has gone back to their dorms. Should we show it to Ivy? No. Not until we know if it's real or not. It says this sister made the other sister disappear. Or maybe it's the other way round. It doesn't say which girl is which. It doesn't even give them names. Merlin's beard. I didn't even know Ivy had a sister. She doesn't. This is all rubbish. It's just a quibbler spreading lies. I don't know. That picture looks very convincing. If Ivy has a twin sister, why isn't she at Hogwarts? Because Ivy made her go away, obviously. Just like she tried to vanish Cassandra. Oh my gosh, that must be what Ivy did. She didn't try to make Cassandra vanish. She didn't mean to do any of it. And you believed her? I don't know. But look, her grandmother also says the story isn't true. Actually, Ivy's grand doesn't deny it. She only claims the neighbors are spreading rumors again. What about the first day of school? When Ivy got lost, what was she really up to? Looking for somebody else to vanish, maybe? She could be dangerous. Who's dangerous? Ivy, what are you doing here? I thought you left. I did, but I came back for another pancake. What are you all looking at? Don't get mad, Ivy, because it's probably nothing. But... The Quibbler? Where did you get that? Cassandra. Cassandra? Why? What's in here that she wants you to see? Is it something about your family? Uh, actually, there's something about you in it, Ivy. What are you talking about? Wait, is that me? And a sister? But I don't have a sister. Are you sure? Of course. It's just me and Dad and Nana and... Wait. I did remember something, but it's blurry. Are you sure it was me in that magazine? It doesn't mention you by name, but it must be. You're wearing the same locket. Oh, I see. But how could I not remember having a sister who disappeared? But you know how to use Evanesco, right? That's a vanishing spell. Yes, but... 
You don't all believe this, do you? That I could do this? No, of course not. We just... we want to know the truth. You do believe it. <laughs> That didn't go well. What do we do now? Give her some time. If she really has a sister, she'll remember. Hi, Ivy. We're going to watch Robin and Kevin play Quidditch, if you want to join us. I think Lottie's going to try drawing a group portrait while we're there, too. Thanks, but I doubt anyone else wants to see me. They're all afraid of me. I don't blame them. I'd be afraid of the girl who vanished a sister she didn't know she had, too. Still don't remember anything, then? Nothing. I feel like there's more, something important. But I can't remember. How could I forget a sister? Did you send an owl to your parents? I did. But it was Nana who replied. That's my grandmother. She said I shouldn't believe everything I read in the Quibbler. But she didn't deny it. I think she might be hiding something. Something about me. Ivy, you keep touching your locket. Do you know what's inside it? No. But it feels special. Like I can almost remember something about it. That makes sense, because it looks like a memory. The kind that can be viewed in a pensive. Of course! Daniel, you're a genius! That must be why I'm wearing it. To remember. That might be a problem. As far as I know, there's only one pensive at Hogwarts, and it's in the headmistress's office. Oh no! I don't want to tell Professor McGonagall. If she thinks I made my sister disappear, she'll expel me for sure. Or worse! Then we'll just have to pay her off as a visit, when the professor isn't in. Did you get the password? I did, my friends. It's Ronsky Faint, as in Quidditch. The headmistress is quite a fan. Thank you. Anything for you, my dear. I also took the liberty of chatting up the portraits within. The former headmasters are a particularly sedentary lot, but they all left at once when I announced my intentions to stay. You should have the office to yourself. For a little while. Good luck! Brilliant. Thanks, Gossamer. Ronsky faint. Ronsky faint. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have you seen a funny little fellow in a suit of armor? He was here a moment ago, but seems to have disappeared, along with everyone else. Oh, um, Gossamer had to leave. How unfortunate. I do enjoy his company, but it appears I have three replacements, none of which is the headmistress. I do hope Minerva has not been sacked. No, sir. Professor McGonagall was busy. And we thought it best to not bother her. Uh, we'll be going now. But you just got here. Surely you didn't sneak into the headmistress's office just so you could scamper off. We came to use the pensive, sir. I have a memory I need to see. One I seem to have forgotten. Ah, I see. But in that case, you might want to check the cupboard against the far wall. Thank you, sir. You're most welcome. But a word of warning. A rather troublesome creature has taken up residence in that cupboard. Proceed with caution. It's a trouble. I'd say that more than troublesome. Insane. 
only looked at you. Now you're in trouble. I'll get you for this. just turn into you are they it seemed like it but why ah here's the pencil what do i do open the locket and pour the memory into the pencil i hope this provides some answers it's going to be all right i promise but we're supposed to go to school together why are you leaving me? Stop it! No! It's true. I have a twin sister. And I killed her. I don't think you killed her, Ivy. You just made her disappear, like the suit of armor. She might have come back. It's hard to tell because the memory isn't all there. But I used Evanesco. You saw it! How could I forget this? I don't even remember her name! Maybe it isn't real. I've seen memories in the pencil before and they were much clearer. Yours might have been tampered with. Where did you get that locket? I don't... I don't remember. But I never take it off and now I know why. It's a reminder. Of who I really am. You're not a bad person, Ivy. You don't mean that. I can see it in your eyes. You're frightened of me. It's not. I mean... It's okay. I'm afraid too. Then let us help you. There has to be an explanation. We'll figure out the truth together. Thank you. But I don't think I trust myself. I need to be alone. That will be safer for you, too. Please don't follow me. I still don't believe Ivy is a bad person. She can't be. I agree. There must be more to the story. But what if the rest is worse than what we saw? What if she really did make her sister disappear? Then we'll do whatever we can to help Ivy get her back. Okay, but we don't know for sure that Ivy's sister even exists. There were only some way to prove it. Wait. In Ivy's memory, her sister was packing for school, right? Therefore, she got a letter of acceptance. There must be a record of all the students accepted to Hogwarts. There is. All the names of those accepted to Hogwarts are written in the Book of Admittance. That's perfect. Where is it? I don't know. My mom told me about it, but just said it was locked in a tower so it can go about its business in private. Whatever that means. But there's so many towers at Hogwarts. We don't even know where to begin to look. We don't, but I know who might. Gossamer! <laughs>